Hey everyone, this is James from Tin Robot Games, and today I'm going to teach you how to play Hamsters vs. Hippos. Hamsters vs. Hippos is a lightweight, press your luck game of tile flipping, lotus flower collecting, and hippo avoiding. Now, if you're playing this game with children under the age of 14, please ensure you have adult supervision as it does contain small parts. So let's get started. So the synopsis of this game is you are a bunch of hamsters who are escaping your enclosure at the zoo. On your way out, you see the lotus flower pond. Now, in hamster land, lotus flowers are like gold. So of course you have to get onto that pond and collect as many as you can before you leave the zoo. Unfortunately, this pond is also where the zoo stores their hippos. Hamsters at the zoo just happen to be the favorite snack of these hippos. So the question becomes, are you gonna collect enough flowers to live like a king in hamster land, or are you gonna become hippo food? Let's find out. Hamsters vs. Hippos has a 52 tile deck. Start by separating the four hippos from the deck. Take two of those, place them to the side. Take the remaining two, add them back to the deck, and mix them up really well on the table face down. Now, if you're playing a one to four player game, deal the tiles out in a five by five grid face down. If you're playing five or six players, deal out a seven by seven grid. Take the remainder of the tiles face down and place them off to the side. The lotus flowers in this game are represented by wooden tokens. The lighter tokens are worth one point, the darker tokens are worth three points. Start by placing one point on top of each of the middle nine tiles. Take the remainder of the tokens and place them in the plastic resource bowl that's been provided. Place it within reach of all players. Have each player choose a color and place a corresponding player board in front of them. Take the corresponding meeple color, place them in your hand, shake them up, and randomly pull one out from under the table. That will be the first player. Now we're ready to play. After the first person finishes their turn, play will proceed in a clockwise manner. The object of this game is very simple. Collect as many lotus flower tokens as you can without being eaten by a hippo. On your turn, you only have two actions. You can use these actions to either move or leave the pond, but the first action must always be to move. If you choose to leave the pond, take your collected tokens from that round, place them on your player board, they're now permanent storage. Let's go through an example. Start by stepping on any perimeter tile on the pond. It doesn't matter if it's on your side of the table or on the other side of the table. Anytime you step on a tile, you must immediately flip it over and perform the action underneath. In this case, is stealing a point from another player. Since no players have gathered points, there's nothing to steal. There's little risk to keep going, so they step on another tile. In this case, they get the token from the top of the tile, as well as the token that's revealed underneath. In this case, they found a flower worth one point. The next player goes. Their first tile reveals an empty lily pad. Since they have no tokens yet collected, there's little risk to keep going. They collect the token from the top of the next tile they're going to land on, flip the tile, and splash. Their turn is over. Now the splash card essentially means that you've fallen in the water. If you land on this tile on your first action, you don't get a second action, your turn is immediately over. This player has revealed the super jump tile. This tile forces you on your next move action to move two tiles away from your current location. You may jump over tiles that have already been flipped, but you must land on an unflipped tile. They've revealed the steal of flower tile. Since other players have already accumulated points, they can take a point from another player. However, if a player only has a three point token, change must be made. Oh, a hippo. Okay, well take their player token, remove it from play. All the tokens that they've gathered that round are now returned to the general supply. It's okay, they still have three more rounds to try to catch up. Now, for the other players, they've just been served notice. If another hippo tile is flipped, everyone is out that's remaining. So they have to decide, are they going to press their luck and keep going for more lotus flower tokens or do they leave the pond and take the tokens they've already collected and place them in the permanent storage? We're now back to the first player. For their first action, they're gonna move on to another tile. They take the token from the top of that tile, they flip the tile over, underneath this tile they find yet another lotus flower token. 
So these two tokens are now going to be added to their temporary supply. For their second action, the risk for them is just too great, so they're going to leave the pond. They take their temporary supply and they add it to their permanent supply on their player board. They will sit out the rest of this round. For the blue player's turn, they flip their first tile. They reveal a super jump tile, which means they have to move two tiles away for the next turn. They choose to move again. They leapfrog the other player onto another tile, take the token, and underneath is revealed a move of flower card. Now this tile allows you to move a Lotus Flower token from any tile that is adjacent to you to another tile that's adjacent to you. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, maybe you want to move a Lotus Flower token away from another player, or perhaps you just want to move a Lotus Flower token onto an adjacent tile that already has a token so you can double up. Let's pretend for a moment that that super jump was actually their first action. This is what it would look like. This is also a good demonstration of how to cut off another player. On the yellow player's turn, now they have flipped tiles all around them and have limited options to move on to unflipped tiles. Whoops! Looks like this tile caused them to drop a flower into the water. In this case, they will only lose one token point. For their second action, they decide to keep pressing their luck. They reveal a super jump tile. Looking at the board, they only have one viable place that they can go in their next move action. It's now the blue player's turn. For their first move action, they're gonna move on to a new tile, flip it, and they've revealed the peak tile. This tile allows you to sneak a peek under any adjacent tile to the one that you're currently standing on. This will help you better navigate the pond. Now in this particular case, when they sneak a peek, they can see that there's nothing underneath the tile that they were going to step onto, so instead, they decide to leave the pond. They take all of the tokens that they've gathered this round and they move them onto the player board as part of their permanent supply. Finally, the yellow player takes their turn. Their last viable move comes up empty and they leave the pond, triggering the end of the round. All tokens collected this round should now be in permanent storage on the player boards. Add another hippo tile to the deck, mix up the cards and deal another grid to start the next round. Now the person on the left of the first player will begin the next round. Keep adding hippos to the deck each round until the third and fourth round when you're going to have four hippos in that deck. Now remember, there may be hippos in the pond or the hippos may be in the stack that you've put off to the side. At the end of the fourth round, count up your points remembering that tokens that are lighter colored are worth one point, tokens that are darker colored are worth three points and determine a winner. Should there be a tie, add a fifth round with all four hippos. If it's still a tie after that, then a tie is a tie. Thanks for playing. Cheers.